I just want to point out to you that, uh, and, and to everyone watching, Mr. Speaker, that you know, uh, when one child is forced from their home, or one adult, or for that matter, you know, uh, a home is like a bowl. And, and can you imagine making a cake without a bowl? Where are you going to put the eggs? Where are you going to put the milk? Where are you going to put all those ingredients to, to get, that, get the ingredients for that, that cake so that you can make that cake and put it in the oven? Try to imagine raising a family. You don't know where you're going to be. You don't know where your school's going to be. No familiar places. You're, in pla you're, you're a stranger everywhere. These kinds of, this kind of displacement has an impact on a child's ability to learn, a child's ability to embrace the environment that they're in. The child begins to sense that maybe their parents can't really protect them, that maybe they're vulnerable, and maybe perhaps that uh, anything could happen to them at any time. This does not bode well for the future. You know, we're talking about a region of the world where that has known way too much conflict, and this conflict is one that we surely need to end. And uh, this idea of this displacement, I think, is another thing that we need to talk about in terms of the impact on the development of this society uh, as, as we talk uh, on at this progressive uh, message uh, this hour uh, and the anniversary of the war in Iraq. Congressman, let's turn for a moment then to, the, uh, to veterans care, if you will. We must begin to take seriously the promise to care for our veterans. Our veterans, uh, proud men and women, you have them in Colorado, I got them in Minnesota. Actually, they're all from all over this country. Uh, and the fact is, um, with tens of thousands of injured troops returning home, we must work diligently to ensure that they do not fall through the cracks and that every soldier receives care and benefit that they have earned and deserve. During our, the 110th Congress, when I was a freshman member, I was proud to have voted for the largest increase in funding for Veterans Affairs in history. Upon passage of H.R. 2642 during fiscal year 2008, Military Construction, Veterans Affairs, and Related Agencies Appropriations Bill. We made a real commitment to uh, military hospital construction, improving the quality of care for veterans, improving the lives of veterans, making sure that we shorten the period of time and that their veterans benefits got to them in a quick, uh, quick, quick way. We not only talked patriotism, we did patriotism as we passed this largest uh, Veterans Affairs uh, funding bill in the history of our country. In the fall of 2007, I worked closely with the uh, Minnesota Congressional Delegation to ensure that members uh, of the Minnesota National Guard Unit, uh, the, um, the uh, 134th Brigade Combat Team, received their full active component GI Bill entitlements the, the, uh, the, uh, that particular unit, uh, that particular uh, uh, brigade combat team returned to Minnesota after a 22-month mobilization and deployment to Iraq, the longest tour of any ground combat unit during Operation Iraqi Freedom. Unfortunately, members of the unit were informed after they returned home, Congressman and Mr. Speaker, uh, that they were not eligible for their full GI benefits because their orders to return home cut them a few days short of the eligibility for these benefits. After my office was informed of this decision, I and Mr. Tim Walls, my congressman and the highest ranking um, uh, uh, enlisted member uh, ever to come to Congress, wrote a letter to the Department of Defense and appealed the decision. The Army responded positively and most of the soldiers of this very brave, courageous and successful combat unit were granted waivers to access those educational benefits. And I just wanted to share that with you, uh, Mr. Speaker and Congressman, because I think it's important that, that, that the world know that members of Congress are fighting for their constituents who have served our country bravely. And I just you know, want to ask you, Congressman Polis, if you, you have any thoughts you want to share with us about our veterans at this time yeah. and about our nation's commitment to this, to this, this, this group of Americans, um, whether or not we agree on the war, we all agree that the warrior needs to be supported. Well, Congressman, I just wanted to congratulate you and all the delegation of Colorado on this uh, wonderful news. Uh, I believe that, uh, that, uh, that uh, Mr. Shinseki is one of the best Veterans Affairs uh, secretaries our country's ever seen, and I uh, expect that we'll be able to work closely with him to not only help uh, the constituents of your great state, but probably many others around our country. Uh, and so, you know, I also just want to mention that I'm proud to have uh, the Minneapolis VA hospital in my district, and Minneapolis VA is one of the ones, one of the units and facilities in our country that I feel very proud to be able to represent. Uh, the Minneapolis VA Medical Center has been awarded 
the 2008 Robert Carey Trophy Award for Performance and Excellence. And, uh, you know, if I sound like I'm a little proud of them, uh, you're right, I am. Uh, the annual Carey Trophy Award, the most prestigious national quality award that the VA bestows, recognizes the VA organization and implements management approaches resulting in high levels of performance to service to our veterans. So with that, I'm just real happy to, to, to mention that, and I am proud along with you as we see veterans in Colorado, Minnesota, all over the country uh, be able to benefit uh, from a responsive Congress, a grateful Congress, uh, for the great service that these brave men and women have uh, given to our country. Well, Congressman, great point. You know, the fact is, is that, you know, our, our, our veterans are our Americans, of course, uh, some of the finest Americans. They come back to their country, they expect a country that's working. So, you know, they can, they can come back and maybe get a green job that will help them build our country on the civilian side. They can help weatherize our neighborhoods. They can help uh, build uh, senior housing, low-income housing. They can help do so many things our country needs and help build us a renewable future. And so I think you're absolutely right to uh, introduce the broader economic context that we're in. One thing we don't want to see is have these veterans who've given so much for so many come back to a country where we're not building, where we're not preparing for the future. So you're right. I'm glad you mentioned uh, the Econo American Economic Recovery and Reinvestment Act. I'm glad you mentioned uh, our efforts to, to build uh, a, a health care system that, that everyone can benefit from. I'm glad you mentioned these important things because, of course, veterans uh, are, are, are folks who come into a broader context. And it's not, just, uh, it's not only veterans' benefits that benefit veterans. It's, it's, a, it's a working, functioning America in which everybody has a slice of, of the pie. So, uh, Congressman, let me just, uh, as we begin to, to, to look at what we're wrapping up today, I just want to just thank you again for being here with us this afternoon. The progressive message has to always come week in, week out. Um, whether or not members are on a Thursday night jumping on a plane trying to get back home or not, the progressive message has to be part of what we do every week. Well, let me join with you in that hope and in that wish. Uh, I think I can speak for members of the Progressive Caucus, uh, Congressman and Mr. Speaker, when I say that we will be working hard to make that dream a reality. Uh, and I also just want to point out uh, that there have been a great many Americans, I'm sure Minnesotans, and I'm sure Colorado, Coloradans as well, who have been calling for, working for, pushing for uh, America to assert its soft power in the world and to help make peace in this world and be a source of peace in this world. Uh, and uh, you can bet there is a committed group of uh, Americans who are in the United States Congress who are people who uh, are call themselves uh, the Progressive Caucus. And you can find out what we're doing on this website at cpc.grohalva.house.gov. Figure out what we're up to. Uh, and we're going to be here giving this progressive, me progressive message every week. Then we are the Progressive Caucus. And as I wrap it up, and I just want to thank you for joining me tonight. Uh, we're going to be here week in and week out through rain, shine, winter, summer, talking about a progressive message, a progressive message for America, for the world. Uh, Congressman Paulson, let me thank you again for joining me tonight. And with that, I yield back.